what I really like is the idea, and that's actually something that MVC teaches as well. Instead of saying, if you're doing something, instead of saying, is this okay? It's quite likely that people are a bit programmed to say yes to that, because mm. they might be a bit pleasing. So instead of saying, is this okay? To say something like, you know, how would it be if I do this? Or how can I make this feel even better? Mm. Or how would you like me to continue now? To really ask these open-ended questions. Uh, how are you feeling? To really, yeah, instead of this, is this okay? And someone's like, mm-hmm. And they're actually dying <laughs> inside. <laughs> yeah. I'm guilty of that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, me too. Sure. Totally. Yeah, me that's too. why it's funny, right? Because people do that. Yeah. And also with just those questions too, to... It seems to me, because if something isn't necessarily working and you ask these questions, that it's okay that it may take time to explore that and to get it right. Mm-hmm. I mean, even in the bedroom or anything that you do, it takes practice, it takes time to get to know. So asking these questions, and if you don't get it right the first time, it will mm-hmm. be the next time. I yeah, I can, I can relate to that. I have a funny story about that, actually that my first partners, none of them wanted me to give a hand job for some reason. So then I was in my 30s and I was, um, and then I was with this guy who um, had kind of erectile dysfunction. So he, so he had a hard time staying hard. And then he did want like yeah. a, a hand job, but then it didn't work because of this, this challenge that he had. And then I had this thought of like, oh, I can't, I can't, I don't know how to give a hand job. And I was super, super nervous and insecure about it. And then the next partner I had, I told him like, you know, I I don't know how to do it and I'm scared to do it. And I actually went to do a workshop about about how to give a hand job. (laughs) 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 Which is so funny to me now because I'm like, it's so easy. But I was so scared. I was like, okay, just do a workshop, you know? And this workshop was more tantric ways of giving hand jobs but it did give me the confidence and afterwards i was like okay that was kind of kind of easy but just to just how these things can get into your head and i i heard a few other women having the same thing with hand jobs like they're they're like it's supposed to be easy but i don't know how to do it (laughs) and also maybe comparing with this idea of like yeah a guy has done it a million times to himself and knows exactly you know what is what is uh, working for him and yeah so yeah well and his hands are coming from a different i mean our like perspective yeah. of our hands are not coming from behind i mean it's so awkward and strange on how we can get it right if they get it done all the time the cow was laughing so hard now i'm curious like did, did you i don't know you know it's just a little it's just a little uh yeah maybe some uh embarrassment <laughs> because i i've had some, i've had a girl give me a blowjob and Oh my gosh, it was incredibly painful because of her teeth. And it was oh, like, okay. wow, that's not something I want. <laughs> and so now it's like every time that goat comes into play, it's like, oh, um, I'm really nervous about this right now. Mm. And that did makes you sense. ever, did, yeah, did you ever manage to say something about that? Uh, uh, yes, for sure. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Now, now I'm very vocal about that. <laughs> okay yeah take out your teeth but, but yeah but in that moment it was like this feeling of like oh no I'm supposed to like this I guess and she's oh. thinking she's okay I'm just gonna pretend like I enjoy this oh yeah but, it sounds so painful yeah yeah not fun I have more tips if you like <clears throat> yeah let's Please. hear it so one other thing is that you know some people might say oh all the all the talking that's ruining the mood so then I was thinking, actually, dirty talk is a way to, you know, there's like, like a, yeah, a way to give instructions that actually enhances the mood. So you could be saying yeah. things like, you know, um, do you like that? Do you want more of that? If you oh. say that with your, with your um, kind of aroused voice, it, it can actually be, be an enhancing thing. And at the same time, kind of double as a, as a way of checking someone yeah or um yeah there's also this there was this guy who was giving uh uh, what i found kind of interesting a very simple formula for people that are a bit scared to start with dirty talk maybe they think it has to be very like elaborate or a lot of 
I don't know, fantasy in it, and they might not be up for that. And this this guy was called Dan Savage. I don't know if you've heard of him. I hadn't heard of him, mm -hmm. but he was suggesting that you can actually um, say what you're going to do, say what you're doing, and say what you did, which is super simple. <laughs> it could be something like, you know, um, I'm going to give you this massage and I'm really going to, you know, I would love to touch your skin and to see how you like it. And, you know, you're doing it and then you're saying something like, um, oh, I'm just feeling all your muscles and it feels so good, something like that. And then you say what you did. Oh, I so enjoyed seeing you moan with my massage and I would love to do it again, something like that. So it's, it can be very simple without having to, to be a different person or something. You can really make yeah. it like just what you're actually feeling in a way. It's just yeah. expressing how you're feeling and what you're thinking, which is, yeah, I kind of I kind of like that simplicity of it. I like that too. That really puts a good structure to it too. I never, I mean, I never really thought of it as in that form, even though when someone likes talking dirty, at, fir at first, I, when I, I wasn't actually really a talker in the beginning of my whole sexual life. And then beginning with people who have been liking the talking and like me to talk, I was concerned about that. I was like, well, what do I say? Is it going to be sexy enough? And having that structure of, I'm going to rub your penis like this. Do you like that? You know, and then say, oh, I really enjoyed doing this to you while you maybe be kissing or something. I never really thought of it in that way because you assume that they want a certain type of talking, mm. you know, like, oh, fuck me you know, or something that's maybe more aggressive or maybe mm. it's more sensual. So there's, there's so much that you could do with talking. And a lot of times I would just mimic them if they're talking to me and what they're saying. And then I'll try to play off of that, which was helpful. I like um, that actually also as a tip. Yeah. If yeah. You're, you're shy or if you're not sure, then copy what they're doing. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. Well, if, they, they can, you can start, if you start doing that and they're doing it, remember what they say. So then mm. when the next time that you go and have sex, then you can kind of pull out some of the things that they say that they may like. Cause normally a lot of people really say like things that. that they enjoy hearing too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. What were you gonna and say you could, Kyle, sorry. You can also ask them too. I think that's a great idea. It's like, oh, you like that? Like, what, what do you like? What do you like to, what do you really like me to say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's it can also be just you know it can be so fun to experiment and to realize that you don't really like what you're saying. You're just to explore. Like I remember, mm -hmm. I was I was dating a a girl for a while, and at some point she was trying out all kinds of dirty talk, and I'd never done it at all, like said anything. So I was like really impressed, and she was just saying things, and she started like really small, and it got like more and more extreme. And at some point she started laughing like so loud because she's <laughs> just saying things out loud. Like, what does it do? And I like that she she was testing what it was doing to her. Like not she wasn't even looking at me. She didn't, she was like, oh okay, this is no, this is too weird. Okay, no. <laughs> and I admire like so much like the courage and like the yeah, like yeah. That's how you find out what is arousing. Like just yeah. Yeah, say some things and you're like. No, oh, this is horrible. I'm sorry. Can we just start over? <laughs> <laughs> I also yeah. like that freedom that she was like, I can just laugh during sex. Like, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. it so much when there can be just lightness and laughter. Yeah. 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 Aww. And what about... Um, so say that there is something that one person wants to do and the other person doesn't want to do it. Um, so one thing that NBC, like say, for example, like what's an example? Can you say an example of one thing that someone wants and the other person? I would say anal. Anal. I'm, I mean, to be in my experience, I'm, <laughs> yes, I've tried it. Yes, I've done it. I probably haven't done it with somebody who actually knew what they were doing maybe or how to actually slowly get into that process to liking it because I know that you know it is pleasurable for some um, 
I'm more concerned about shit coming out everywhere and I just rather not do it <laughs> to be honest like there's my story right there yeah so um I would say if someone wanted to do that I would usually say I don't prefer that um so maybe that would be something that someone would say no to I mean I know I would yeah you know I like so. the example and what I love what you're doing is actually you're kind of doing what I would recommend which is to um to explore a little bit like what is it exactly because what happens yeah. sometimes is that mm. because you know saying no when you don't want something is so important and it can be kind of scary to say no to someone's you know vulnerable wish of for example yeah. having anal sex that sometimes we might be so relieved that we got it out like okay no i don't want to do that and then we kind of like close off a little bit like we mm. we okay mm. i said it okay and now no let's not talk about it you know Hmm. and it gets all tense uh -huh. when actually I think there's a difference between having a boundary and like staying in your comfort zone while maybe you might like to try something if you would explore like what is it that's holding me back so if you can so I, I actually have like a few questions you can ask yourself like oh what is it about anal sex in this case let's take that one so the first question is do you find it gross is there something unhygienic about it that could maybe be solved or maybe not well i'm mm. hearing from you that you're afraid poop is going to come out is that is that an unhygienic thing or more embarrassing thing i think both both yeah <laughs> i can tell I, mean, I, I, <laughs> i mean in general i hate pooping i know a lot of people like it it's like relieving mm. but for me it's messy it's gross it's like dirty and just the whole thing the whole process is a mess mm. i don't like it i you know if i had a bidet i would probably use that um which would be obviously solving the problem of having to wipe and all that so yeah i actually in general probably have this belief around pooping and having anal sex uh lead, kind of leads into that because you're putting something in something that is not for me where my visualization is not sexy hmm. like i just don't think of it as sexy i don't get turned on by it so and that's probably because i have this visualization of what i do with this body part hmm. so having sex yeah. with it to me is huh, and the feeling of it as well you know just of them penetrating there is uncomfortable so it's not only is it you know all of the things you said and the physical part of feeling good yeah i can imagine that yeah the second question is are you scared it will hurt and in your case hurt or discomfort i think they're both yeah yes um, important. Yeah. so yeah. i'm hearing that that's that's one for you the next one probably probably doesn't apply but let's say just because you know there might be other examples for people are you scared that you're not good at it I don't really care. If you don't I really care because <laughs> you already have a no with the first two. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just I'll just mention the yeah, question exactly. just, just for the sake of. Um, mm. So no, number four four is like, are you scared that you won't look good in this position? You know, like maybe you get self conscious about the way you look in this position. And number five is, are you ashamed of having this type of sex? Are you ashamed of actually maybe liking it? So maybe there's something that you know you might you might think you like but you don't want to like it because you're ashamed of that if it's something yeah out of the ordinary that or, yeah that's a good one that's a really really good one not that it applies to me hmm. um, about the shame because it's true yeah um, my ass in the air i'm sure it looks just fine <laughs> 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 so i don't have a problem with that but the shame part like that's huge feeling ashamed especially when you were mentioning kyle about you know maybe religion doesn't necessarily hold space for that mm. or whether or not is that okay to do mm. do i feel ashamed to even do this yeah yeah like yes if you don't hear people talking about something growing up a lot of the times there's this like like thought that you get where you're like well is that even like okay to talk about mm. And so that develops some shame if you start to talk about it. Do you have an example of that? Like what, what type mm. of thing are you thinking? I don't know. 
Did your family not talk about sex a lot? Oh, no, not at all. My parents oh. never talked to me about sex. And so just, I guess there's a whole thing in general has been a process of me coming to uh, uh, seeing that, oh, this is, this is, all of this is okay to talk about. I think MVC has, has totally given me the level of comfort to talk about really anything where, uh, I mean, sex or anything that I felt discomfort about because I knew that now I have the tools to stay in a place of empathy for myself and for others. Yeah. 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 Did you talk about sex with your friends instead if it wasn't at home? Nope. Oh. Well, I was homeschooled oh. growing up and basically oh, only were. had uh, friends in church uh, oh. all through high school. Mm -hmm. And so uh, very centered around that. Yeah. Oh, only started talking about sex in college. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that about you. We all learned something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't get any of the 90s references that anybody makes. I just. <laughs> yeah, I you're like, I don't know nothing. <laughs> I was homeschooled. <laughs> I want to give one more tip. Like if you are exploring something with, with someone that, you know, you might be open to or maybe not, you know, we discovered, I think, with you that it's it sounds kind of like a no that's going to be stay a no, right? Um, yeah. To actually, like, whenever you're requesting something that you, you know, you would like to do, you haven't done it before with your partner or your lover or whoever, um, to, to, to say that, you know, would you, would you be up for trying it for, I don't know, one minute or maybe even two seconds? Would you like to try it for two seconds? And then this gives a bit of safety of, like, Mm. and because then if you don't want it we will still stop you know so mm. it's really like a very small request of you want to try it for two seconds and then see and if you don't like it we will abort the mission mm. um, yeah that can give some safety to people because because there's often this thing of like it's bad to change your mind somehow mm -hmm. or it might be painful for the other person if we start it so i'll have to continue and i don't know if i want that so no let's just say no to the whole thing which is a pity because then maybe there is some curiosity in you, but you just like, like with anal, for example, maybe you've never tried it and you just, you're afraid it will hurt, but you don't know how it will be for you. Right. And how is it? Um, so yeah, you could make an agreement like, okay, try for two seconds and then see, then check mm -hmm. in again. I like that because then it puts a time on it where there's no expectation of you, if there was no time, you'd be like, oh, when's it gonna be over? Or, mm -hmm. okay, a minute's up, check in. How are you feeling? You wanna keep going or you wanna stop? This also builds a lot of trust in our sex lives with our partner because, you know, when you do stop or when you say, okay, it's been a minute, how do you feel? Then you are able to build on that. And then maybe next time it could be a minute and a half you know that way you actually don't have to go okay stop 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 and have to like be afraid to say no 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 yeah I'm good now you know so there's I like that there's kind of a comfort in that and having a time and then mm -hmm. checking in mm -hmm. and trust building which is really good to have and consent yeah and if you want to ensure you know if you're afraid that your partner says that they like something but you're not really sure you know like you're not sure if they're trying to please you then you could also say something like on a scale from zero to ten how much do you like this and then they're a little bit more forced to say well it's a six and then you can say okay what 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 does it make what makes it a six and what makes it not a ten so you can really explore a little bit like oh what am i doing right and what should we build on and what is maybe hmm, uncomfortable or we don't want to do yeah. that I like that hmm. it seems like rating it seems to be like a good solid understanding of like oh okay and then you can dive in deeper of yeah why it is that yeah and it's not about just to be clear about rating your partner or something right no 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 right right it's really about <laughs> rating your level of comfort and pleasure so. comfort <laughs> yes Good yeah. clarification. <laughs> yeah. So I have one last um, 
uh, tip, if you like, um, which is Wait, about on, or, or a topic, I would say more, and I have a few tips. And it's about, you know, how to, we talked about it a little bit, like how to address tricky topics, like really the, the thing of, you know, you're noticing that your partner has erection loss and, and they don't talk about it. Like, how do you, how do you say that? Or they have bad breath and you don't know how to, you're like, ah, how do you say that? <laughs> so, so here what I, and I actually asked a few guys, a, a few male friends of mine, like, how, like if you would have ch like a challenge with your erection, how would you want, and you don't want to bring it up. How would you want your, your girlfriend to bring it up? And they came up with the, with the following. I'm going to sweet read it <laughs> i love this <laughs> so i have the impression that you lost your erection quicker than usually lately do you think that as well mm. and what i love about this one is that you make an observation as you do in nonviolent communication so you mm -hmm. you know you really state the neutral fact and you don't say you know you have an erection problem because this is something that <laughs> someone yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> themselves or just run away. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you want you really want to make make an observation that's that's yeah just mentions the one thing that's happening, and then to actually check with them if they agree with your observation. So yeah, mm. do you, do you think that as well? Did you notice that as well, or how do you how are you experiencing this? And then to start you know talking about that and say maybe you know shoot. Shall we have a brainstorm about what we could do? Like to really also kind of do it together. Like this person is not alone in this, in this thing. If they, nice. unless they want to do it alone, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there's something about really sticking to the observation instead of labeling someone, I guess. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just, and, and otherwise not to beat around the bush too much. Like just say what it is. Cause if, I was with a partner who, who had um, erection loss uh, for a while before I knew NVC and I just didn't talk about it. And in doing that, I made it like a taboo as well. So mm. it's just saying it or already makes it less of a taboo, I think, mm. more something that it happens, you know, if it's, yeah. It does, yeah. Yeah, and you don't know if he doesn't want to talk about it or not. And you're just opening the space for him to, to feel like, oh, you, you you want to talk about it? Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, like creates this like vulnerability that, and maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's like, no, we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. And I got. I was afraid too. I was definitely afraid to talk about it when it had happened to me. Hmm. because I already felt badly enough that he was struggling already and I didn't want to bring it up to create more shame or more embarrassment for him um and it's not like it was something that happened I think it happened once I mean do you bring it up when it only happened once or do you bring it up if it happened like every other time you know so yeah, I definitely was part of that not bringing it up and not, mm. you know, talking about it. Yeah. And I think I was just scared to. I didn't really know how, in your words, you know, hey, I noticed that this happened. Is that, is it the same thing for you? And, you know, how can I help or is there anything I can do? Yeah. Yeah, the thing is we're kind of afraid to, to ruin the mood or to hurt someone. But the thing is... Yeah. If if it's there and you both notice it, it's already there. It's already mm. there. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, yeah. And there yeah. was a, another one that I got um, from this girl that that said like if a, if someone would and, it, and this is all examples with guys. Maybe we can think of some things that girls might be dealing with. But um, when if a guy would have um how do you say that have an orgasm quicker than you want like with penetration then instead of saying uh that was way too short or something like you know you you're not able to last long or something like that <laughs> you, to actually say oh my god that was amazing i want more and then ah, the guy would be in the mood like pretty quickly again All right <laughs> <laughs> And so this is really about, yeah, phrasing it like, like positively. I want round two. Yeah, round two, yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah. 
And if you're scared that your partner, that if you want to try new things and you're scared that your partner would see it as, oh, you're not happy with, with what we're doing now, to really emphasize the need. So the need could be variety, you know, like I'm, I'm super happy with what we're doing now and I have a need for variety. So, you know, I would like to expand our experience which sounds way more positive. And if it's true, of course, eh, you could be actually unhappy and then maybe it's good to address that. But quite often we're not like super unhappy, but we just have a positive longing, like a wish to add something to the, to the buffet, so to speak. So, yeah. Is the, do, you, do you have another like um, sensitive topic that you're curious how to address? So maybe we could think of something. Yeah, I actually have one. So I'm, you know, single. <laughs> and the how to talk about or how to phrase when we're talking about STIs, or if people have a transsexual oh, yeah. <clears throat> disease, or I guess is now infection. Um, I know that H HPV is very common. Um, I have HPV. I have been tested recently that's been negative. I also, I'm not understanding a lot whether or not it's something that lays dormant. Um, so when you have an STI, how do you go on to talk about that? Um, also, general herpes is something that is really common also and then all the other ones as well to um, how in the way can we like the most gentle way to hmm. say, here's the fact and giving them the freedom of choice to do their research. Hmm. Um, I would say to make the topic of STIs and contraception, like a, like just like a normal part of things to discuss before you, like have sex with someone to, to really say, hey, can we discuss STIs and contraception and how we want to go about that? And to, just to make it like, okay, this is just something we're going to discuss. And maybe they also have something to tell you. And then to, to say like the thing that you would want them to know, like what, what you have. And actually, I like that you were saying like, hey, maybe I want to give them space to do some research before they say yes. So... I forgot the English word of the thing, the thing that you had. HPV. HPV. It's the human um, yeah. papilloma virus. Yeah. yeah, actually it's the same in Dutch, I think. Yeah, HPV. So, so yeah, to say like, uh, I know that I have HPV and it means this and this. Um, I'm curious how that is for you to hear. I would understand it if you want to do some research yourself and, and think about it before you say if you want to. Uh, continue with me or um, yeah how does that sound I'm just trying out some things I don't know yeah that sounds really good um, thank you for telling me I appreciate you being open with me and yeah I think I'm gonna go do some research to make sure that this would be a good fit um, how's that sound as the other person <laughs> yeah <laughs> how about Kyle how do you think I think about the fear of a loss of intimacy and if like you have an STD and you're like oh, I really want physical affection right now and like hmm. I and I really want intimacy and um, to maybe sh share that in part with this it. like oh like if you're afraid of sharing this it's like start by like saying like like, I really like you. I think you're really cool. And like, I'm really attracted to you. And part, I, I, I really want to respect you. And part of me is kind of scared because I'm, I'm afraid that you'll kind of pull away from me if I share with you my STD. Hmm. Yeah, to include like your wish actually for intimacy and that you, um, that you're afraid to lose that when you say it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that brings it to a more vulnerable place, I think. Mm. Um, and it's like, it's like also a, a space to share your attraction to them and can yeah. help them see like, oh, you're into me. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. 
Another sensitive topic I'm thinking of is um, having sex on your period. And like, how does, how, how do we have a conversation about that as a guy? Like, because hmm. I've heard some people talk about how some women like to have sex on their menstrual periods, or I don't really know if that's a common thing. Um, yeah. Actually, sure. the way you're addressing it now is perfect to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, I heard this thing and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. I mean, that's, that's how I'm losing you. Like, yeah, just, just, yeah, just to say, you know, I know that women have their period once a month and I know that some women like to have sex in that moment and some women don't like how do you feel about it is there something you need mm. is there something you need for me to hear if yeah mm. and then maybe there's your side as well like maybe you would like to say what are your your preferences in this mm. um yeah yeah how does that sound what, what are you thinking when you hear that i i yeah i mean i, I i'm I think about, yeah, okay, it's like all the bodily fluids that come out of, I uh, like sex is like, uh, I mean, in a mechanical perspective, it's kind of gross, like to begin with. <laughs> like, Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Not my sex. <laughs> you don't have to deal with it once a month. My God. <laughs> and so it's like uh, questions of like, okay, well, you're bleeding and I don't know if that's sanitary for me and maybe that's part of partly being like educated on that mm. and then also partly of like well is uh, uh i i can tell that like uh, whenever your period comes around you're like pretty horny <laughs> you know <laughs> or like so it's like it seems like you're into it but then like when i go to have sex i don't know this is just spitballing I just go, mm. go to have sex and then you're kind of like mm, maybe not into it and i wonder about how to like how can we uh find intimacy in that space uh, yeah without me feeling confused i think maybe would be the first thing sure. that would yeah like, uh, what yeah, um i think it sounds like you have a need for clarity like just yeah yeah definitely <laughs> and then also yeah. like well you seem like you're really uh want to have sex and then when we go to have it uh you're like resistant mm. for not wanting it mm. yeah that there's some, that you want some understanding about that as well like that sometimes one moment this person seems to be into it and then maybe there is some resistance what is the resistance about yeah mm. yeah and i'm thinking also like maybe there is some insecurities surrounding that and how mm. to yeah bring that up or how to how to ask about those just like that sensitivity hmm. you're asking me that now or this is just like your... <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yeah how to ask about that this might be a scary topic or yeah or at, or like uh, yeah, how to how to create space to allow for um, a woman to share uh, her insecurities mm. yeah, around it. Yeah. Mm. Actually, again, I like how you phrase it now. Like, if 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 you would tell me, like, hey, I I would like to figure out how to create this space where you can talk about you know any insecurities surrounding this topic what, what do you need in order to feel safe mm. to talk with me mm. do you need me to listen in silence or would you rather i don't know write about it instead of talking or i don't know you could like make some guesses yeah. maybe and i also was inspired by you, you used the word that you need maybe some education so to to ask someone hey can you can you educate me about how this works with menstruation and, and women? And in, in your case specifically, like, I just want to be educated about this. Mm. And how is it for, for you specifically? Of course, this mm. can be different for each person. I, I would feel very invited uh, by that. Mm. 
just having you here, Marianne. It's just been awesome. And it's been a pleasure and pun intended. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> In a highlight. Puns. Puns, man. Sometimes they just come out and it's like, it wasn't well, you guys hard at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just been so cool to meet you finally because I've, you know, just I've learned a lot from your videos and you were the one person from my NBC group who suggested like if you were to learn anything, you were the person. So I was mm -hmm. like, sweet. <laughs> and it's been awesome. I do my NBC chart almost every day and that's thanks to you. So <sighs> it's been super fun. And I, we would love to have you on again, if there are things that you have gathered that you would love to share and spread out through to the world and to our NBC community and our living connected community. And it's been so fun. I'm so thankful and grateful. 